David, you have chosen, as I understand it, the optimal place to watch this eclipse. That's right. Uh, eclipse chasers need clear skies, and all the climate data tells us that Mazatlan is it. Now, many people watching, and, and I'm part of this group, have never seen an eclipse, really maybe don't fully understand why it is so attractive to people like you. Uh, explain the profound impact eclipses have had on you. Well, for me, it's the sense that for those few moments when I'm standing in totality, I'm being reminded that I live in the solar system. When I get to peer down the center of the, the shadow of the moon, which is lined up perfectly with the, the, the surface of the sun, um, I am sort of have this rising sense of awareness that I'm a citizen of the solar system. And at, at no other time in my life um, do I get that sense of how ground that I am actually in the cosmos and that we come out of the cosmos and that for our entire lives, we're flying through space on a rock at 100,000 kilometers an hour. And those realizations aren't really common in our day-to-day -day life. And during a total eclipse of the sun, those things come into view and it makes me feel like I belong here. I know there's so many things that contribute to that feeling you have about eclipses, but we've given you an assignment, and that is to identify the top four things that people should be looking for on Monday. So take us through the list. Well, there's so many things that come together all at once during a total eclipse. It's one of the things that makes it just so spectacular. But what I like to look out for first is the advance of the shadow from the southwest. In the two or three minutes before totality, you will notice when you look into the sky, as you can see in the horizon behind me, you'll notice that the shadow of the moon is finally arriving to your location. This shadow is being projected out of space, down onto the Earth, moving at almost 3,000 kilometers an hour, and it fills the sky in the direction that the eclipse is coming from, as if a storm is engulfing your location. I love seeing the arrival of the shadow, and it's one of my favorite things that I look out for. The other thing is, as we um, get in towards totality, is the uh, final diamond ring, what's called the diamond ring effect. When you look up into the sky, the advancing limb of the moon will finally extinguish a brilliant little patch of sun in behind that advancing limb. And for that brief moment, it appears as if you're looking at a diamond ring in the sky. It's one of Eclipse Chaser's favorite things. The other thing, of course, the crowning glory of a total eclipse of the sun is the corona the atmosphere of the sun shooting out in streamers and brushes and pencil shapes for millions of kilometers out into space. This is the structure. This is the phantasmal vision of a total eclipse of the sun that eclipse chasers love to observe. Most eclipse chasers will spend most of their time during a total eclipse observing the structure of the corona with binoculars, looking at all the fine detail. So this is that uh, flower shape or that petal shape in the sky that is the symbol of the total eclipse. The other thing that you do not want to miss is prominences. This is tiny pink and crimson um, shapes and structures, which are actually gas that come shooting off the surface of the sun and are being pulled back by magnetic forces. And these prominences come in all different types of shapes and structures. There was one that we called the seahorse once and another one that we called the rocket ship. And these brilliant pink uh, um, shapes of gas are as if a jewel box has tumbled open in the sky behind the dark side of the moon. All these you, phenomena together add up to make the total eclipse an intense experience. You are making me really regretful about the fact that I'm going to be in Vancouver on Monday and not <laughs> in the path of the eclipse. And I guess one of the things that's special about this particular eclipse is how long it's going to last. Well, that's right. On the day of the eclipse, the moon is just that much closer to the Earth, which means that the shadow that it casts down onto the surface is just that much wider. So it takes longer to pass over you as you stand on the surface of the Earth. This eclipse will be among the longest that I will ever see for that reason. I just can imagine people who are traveling to the path, excited by what they're hearing from you, and then it might be cloudy. <laughs> well, and, and this is the Eclipse Chasers game. You pay your money, you take your chances. So we've come to Mazatlan hoping for clear skies. Will it be completely clear? Will we get what we hope for so deeply? We'll have to wait and see. But that's also the case through Texas, through the middle of the United States, and up into eastern Canada as well. Everybody's going to roll the dice and just pray that the clouds open up. David, it has been so exciting talking to you, and uh, I wish you the best of luck watching the Eclipse 
on Monday. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ian.